In the cool morning hours at Mayaka State Park, nature puts on quite a show. And some double-crested cormorants coming in for a, a landing. And one man is in the front row. Whoa, look nice at those ducks. Look at, look at those ducks. Oh there is. Owen Kimura, resident bird interpreter. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the bird walk. You're in luck. We have some roseate spoonbills out there. Every Tuesday and Thursday from November through April, you can find Owen here talking bird talk. You're looking at a great egret eating a fish. They have to swallow the fish head first. If they swallowed it tail first, the scales would cut up its gullet. Owen is a walking encyclopedia of bird knowledge. Right His play-by-play -play commentary is exciting and insightful. There's the kingfisher up there hovering. You see it? Hovering. He'll, he can see a fish from up there, and if he catches it, he smashes into the water. He may get... He missed. He missed. He'll have to try again. Wherever Owen goes, people flock. See that? There's a lesser. He has collected 622 North American birds on his life list, that tally that birders keep of all the bird species they've identified during their lifetime of birding. Oh, and tell me, what's the fascination about birds? Well, the, it's the thrill of the hunt without killing anything. The thrill of the hunt began for Owen in North Bergen, New Jersey at age 13. Many birders were closet birders. It was not the kind of thing that you admitted to your friends, especially in New Jersey. He went to college at Utica College of Syracuse University, graduated with a PR degree, got a job at a prestigious New York ad agency. And I took Rod Serling on his first press tour for the Twilight Zone. Yeah, that was a wonderful experience. In 1962, Owen went to work for what would become network television's most famous bird. No, no, not that one. The other one. They didn't have the peacock when uh, I got to work at NBC in, 19, in 1963. They had the NBC snake. As director of National Press, Owen rubbed elbows with many celebrities, but his passion for birding never waned, even in the city. I always had a pair of binoculars at the desk, and if a client would call and a bird came by, I'd have to tell them to hold on, I had to identify the bird, and they understood. <laughs> they all put up with me and my birds. After 20 years with NBC, Owen started his own PR company with his wife, Betty. She was actually my secretary and vice president, and chief bottle washer and uh, one morning I went and, and woke her up at something sometime around 6 30 a.m. and I said Betty take a letter and Betty looked at me and she said Owen take a hike. <laughs> Owen got about the same respect from a young filmmaker whose documentary he was hired to promote. And the program was the Civil War. Uh, I had never heard of Ken Burns before, and uh, I was introduced to him in New York City, and I see this kid when I come in, and everybody's kind of uh, fawning over him. I'm introduced to him, Ken Burns, Owen Kamara, and I, he's not that friendly towards me. <laughs> he came into my office, and I just did not like him at all. I guess he thought that I was a Broadway-type press agent. And at the end, I rather disdainfully said, what, do we now, I have to call you pussycat and, and you call me sweetheart now? Is that what it is? Because this is the language of flack. Uh, and we uh, formed a kind of a bond. And over the years, uh, we still talk to each other uh, the same way. Uh, it is now the pussycat and sweetheart have become terms of endearment, <laughs> you know. He is a pussycat. He's just one of the great all-around human beings I've ever met. What'd you see? Betty, I just saw a male and female wood duck out there walking in the back, and I, I'm really surprised. Owen and Betty retired to Sarasota in 1999. Compatible and completely opposite. Look at the neighbors over there. Uh, no, Look at Betty. that person no, over there. No, Betty, we She's won't gonna... do that. My wife is not a birder. She encourages me to bird whenever I want, as long as she doesn't have to come with me. 
here are a couple of uh, black neck stilts. Unsure of what to do with his newfound free time, Owen approached the folks at Mayaka with an idea. I said, you know, why don't we set up a birding program? Uh, I'll bring my spotting scope and my binoculars and try to teach people about the birds of uh, Mayaka. And they thought that was a great idea. Nine years later, the bird talk is still going strong. Even on his off days, the bird interpreter is still interpreting. The turkey vulture glides with a kind of a V, a V for vulture. If they were eagles, they would glide with his, their wings even, even for eagle, E for eagle. And the osprey, of course, flies like that. Yeah. <laughs> As a bird called an American bittern wanders into sight, it is clear that the thrill of the hunt is still alive, 63 years after Owen's birding began. He caught a snake right here. This is the best view I've ever had. Oh, and you, you know there are cynics who feel that uh, birders really need to get a life. Well, Jack, I have to tell you that we have a life, and it, when we go birding, it's a beautiful life. A beautiful life that is tranquil and rewarding. A life definitely not for the Boyds. <laughs>